So uh, an update to where we are at this point, and we put in lots and lots of work uh, to this point. Assessment, uh, uh, we are making progress, but our roster is thin, um, so not much depth. Um, but we have capable players that are working hard, the chemistry is strong, and we're building. And so the, the focus right now is on the process, and every single day matters, every single repetition matters, every single meeting matters. And we're racing uh, against the clock to be prepared for not only the first game, but to build uh, the kind of program I think we all would like to see here. Um, solid leadership from our upperclassmen. I like our 2017 recruiting class. Again, having said all that, uh, our biggest issue right now is maturing and developing and establishing depth fast enough. Um, our roster is thin, uh, but capable. When you look at the offensive line, are you pretty close to, to holding in on a group that you can use there? We've had some injuries there, and uh, so we got a couple of those guys back today, and it, it'll take all the way through uh, probably Thursday of next week to have that completely solidified. But the good news is, is there's more bodies and more players competing for the spots than what we finished with a year ago. And so mixed bag, good and bad, that um, it's not quite as solid as we'd like yet. Um, but some injuries have, getting guys back from injuries has played a role in that. You, you got McDonald, I'm sorry, you got McDonald back, who else was in that? Uh, Montellus had been hurt uh, for a while. You had your Montellus back? Yeah. Your jersey draft, obviously, on uh, Friday. A couple of veterans didn't get numbers, English and Powers, anything beyond that or? Yeah, so um, Jack Powers will medical for this year. His wrist, um, after trying to come back, was not uh, was not healed, and so he won't be able to play this year. Um, Jack English, uh, I've suspended for our first game against William and Mary, and he'll be back with us after that. Do you think Powers can get back next year? Or that will be no. Uh, his his plan is to man. Uh, he was passionate about our program, but he was anxious to to help us, but it just became clear that that's not going to happen for him. And so uh, he'll finish his master's degree, um, then back most likely to California where he's from and, and uh, start real life. How do you think of that defensive end position? Obviously, that was a guy that had experience there. You have Andrew, you have uh, Boy. Who else in there is in that mix? Um, probably the biggest surprise of maybe the entire camp has been uh, James Trusillo. And he has, he, prior to even Jack Powers being hurt, he had played his way into the top three or top four every day. And so what we're losing in Powers, we're kind of gaining in Trusilla, different body types, but um, uh, James's play has really helped us there in terms of depth. Um, and then Stephen Wright is someone to consider. You've talked, going back to the spring and through this preseason, the emphasis has been so much on just playing football, yeah. playing football. How does that change your, I don't know, does it change as you start getting into game weeks and into the season now? Uh, we'll, we'll squeeze in as much as we can. We played more today. Uh, we'll play more Wednesday. Um, and that most likely will conclude our live work against each other based on how Wednesday looks. So I've tried to squeeze as much live work in as possible and then maintain the best health I can for our team with, again, a, um, a thin uh, a roster that's not very deep. So, man, it's been... A delicate balance and a stress point the whole way, uh, but at least one more time, and then I'll assess from there. That was kind of your biggest off-season adjustment from year one to year two. What you, any big in-season adjustments do you anticipate in year two? You know, um, hard hard to say. I hope we've made most of the appropriate ones off-season, but there's there's never a season where there aren't adjustments that have to be made. Hard to predict where they're going to come from whom what positions might outperform or exceed expectations, which might be under. So I still anticipate some of that. Hopefully we've just limited those decisions from all the work we've put in so when far. You, I think when you think events uh, of uh, the last week have brought you, have strengthened the bond on your team? Mm, I think our team was strong already, and the bond was strong. Uh, but again, most of the leadership that I saw um, and what we've done as a program uh, didn't come directly from me. I just simply helped um, facilitate what the players wanted to do. And so I think the team is developing a stronger bond. I think they're just developing stronger leadership. I think they're becoming more clear in purpose. And I think they wanted to step up and fill a void and make a statement that, um, uh, that football can influence and contribute to the society at large in, in Charlottesville. And so I think They've made a pretty clear statement that that's what they'd like to do. How about the former players who supported you? It's been great. 
Um, this, I'm just learning and realizing that the former players care a lot about um, not only the university and football, but they care a lot about this community. They, they really liked living in Charlottesville, and and it was uh, a great time for them. And so they, they've shown a sincere interest, and that's I think not only impacted me, but our our entire team. Jack English just as mentioned. Can you say off field related, on field related? Uh, just violation of team rules. That's as far as I'll go. And who else do you have working? Uh, I guess at that left tackle position. Um, a couple of young young players. Um, Dylan's Rankinmeyer, Rankinsmeyer had played some center, and he's playing some tackle. Um, Osiris Crutchfield uh, is playing some there. Um, but there's different combinations. Uh, Montellus could possibly play there. So uh, once McDonald comes back, that kind of frees up uh, a movement a little bit to get our best five out there at once. When you analyzed your program in the offseason, which I assume went on through the spring, was that the most you've ever put your program under a microscope? Well, um, I don't think it's the most I put our program. I, I think I do that every year. I think just um, the amount of things, um, the composite and the volume of, of areas that needed to be addressed to, to, uh, to have corrections, um, to staff, um, to scheme, to, uh, to um, put the right players in the right spots, and then to look for alignment of, with our current team. What else can we do to give them their best chance to be successful? Um, all the way through uh, game management for and then learning about our opponents and what the best matchups might be there. So probably the most volume. I wouldn't say the most uh, intense, but just the, the sheer amount of work was probably the highest. Coach, so when you say you're thin, is that because of injuries, because guys have less a program, because you want a red shirt? Uh, uh, my, so uh, pr pretty much all of the above, with the exception of red shirt. My philosophy is uh, I, I'd like to play anyone that's capable of playing, regardless of what year they are, if they earn a spot. Um, I love the idea, especially for an institution that expects every student to graduate in four years. Well, I don't think it's right for an athletic program to now say, because you can play a sport, we're going to now take an exemption and we want you to do it in five. So um, I like the alignment with the university. Um, we're accelerating our players as fast as possible. A lot of it's just where the program is um, and continuing to, to bring in and build the right capability and competency and depth that's needed. Marco, last year at the, uh, I think it was the Paint the Town Orange, you were up there with your captains, and mm. you kind of told the crowd, hey, he's off on holiday plans. This is our expectation. Yeah. This is where we want to go. Is that something that you still want to preach, or is it, is it temp more tempered expectations? I, I, I think more tempered. Um, if I've learned anything, that this will be a process rather than um, this isn't um, – a polish and reboot and everything's good and it's not even a rebuild it's more if it's business it would be more startup oriented where that kind of volume and now that I've seen it I know and so um, I would I would if I were to do it all over again under promise um, but that's lesson learned for me as now that I know more clearly where I am where the program is and what we need to do how did the number process selection process compare to last year oh um, uh, it was uh, it was impactful a year ago, but um, I think it was even more so this year. The the, the task unit leaders they wrestled with um, the top 50 picks and and who would get them and where and spent hours and and really did a nice job of explaining why each player was selected in the position they were and uh, that came from the players, not me and. When someone stood to receive their number, it meant a lot to them that they were recognized by their peers, uh, and it's been one of the one of the highlights I think of my coaching career. Um, those two nights, I've really really been impressed with our team, and it's just the foundation and the leadership and and the values and principles of the program are just becoming more and more ingrained. I can see it, and eventually the performance in the field will catch up with that. Um, but I really like the inside part of our program. Do you have a kicker yet? Uh, we have three kickers for each spot right now. <laughs> I'm not ready to crown anyone. You have a yet. snapper. We have a, a two snappers actually. So who are they? Uh, they are Joe Spaziani and Richard Burney. But Spaziani was the snapper. He is the snapper. So That's so what you asked me. Oh, I mean the holder. Holder. Oh, the holder. That's a great question. Um, 
I haven't paid one bit of attention to the holder, actually, <laughs> uh, which means it's good because I haven't had to. So whoever's doing it's doing a nice job. <laughs> well, I'll have a is, number. A true story. <laughs> is Devontae Cross, is he to the point where he can, he can be a factor offensively for you, or is he still learning that? He's still learning, um, but he's done a really nice job. Uh, he is someone I've noticed all through our practices in terms of his ability to make plays and consistently do so. So um, he's been a nice surprise. Surprise is too strong a word. He's emerged and done a really good job. There's one guy that's been consistent the number draft is that Jordan Ellis has been yeah. on the line back to back years. Last year he was, you know, he yeah. was still behind Smoke and Albert and those guys. This year he's more of a factor for your offense going forward. What's that say about, about him and, and how much of an impact have you expected from hmm. this year? Um, his impact is, is kind of hard to manage or, or uh, to describe because he doesn't say anything. Uh, he and I get along really well on the field. <laughs> we just stare at each other a lot. But he works really, really hard. And he's the unanimous pick, again, not by what he's saying, but his influence by how he works and who he is. And that, that's, a, that's a huge statement um, to have that two years in a row. Uh, especially when you're considering Micah was the second pick and to, for anyone to be selected over him by their peers, that's quite a statement. So um, he's more of a slasher, um, fall forward, grind out yardage player, so much different than the dynamic and, and big play threat, which even is maybe more relevant and, and, and more impactful in getting, the, getting those votes. Have you given him a book? You're always talking about guys getting books from your... He hasn't come to me. Um, I might go to him. Uh, he's, <laughs> he seems to know a lot about leadership. Having Malcolm in the linebacker before, how did that change that whole group and, and the dynamic of that group? Yeah, um, he's just, uh, he's matured and he's knows the defense really well after his experience a year ago. And he's being productive. So uh, with he on one side and peace on the other, um, it's a, a nice combination. But again, they have to stay healthy. Uh, so again, I like a lot of our first uh, unit on either side of the ball. Uh, pretty substantial drop off in some spots. So we're trying to find enough quality depth. Um, again, I'm not considering anything other than our first game. Uh, and, uh, once we move into game week, at this point, I'm trying to find the right players to train and specific backup roles to, to manage that part as we get closer.